Without a doubt, guys, these are the best stories about Dirk Nowitzki out there. By now, the entire basketball world knows the name Dirk Nowitzki, though some people might just remember him for his fadeaway or his insane stat lines. However, a lot of people don't seem to know some of the crazy things that he did throughout his career, as well as some of the stories that teammates have told the media regarding the legendary German native. In today's video, we'll be going over a couple of the best stories involving Dirk Nowitzki. And be sure to stick around until the end of the video to find out who Dirk believes is the toughest player he's ever had to guard. Dirk Nowitzki was obviously a major contributor for the Dallas Mavericks championship run almost a decade ago. It was clear that all of his teammates, coaches, and fans loved him as a player and as a person. However, Tyson Chandler, a teammate of Dirk's, didn't feel the same way at first. Chandler recently shared a story about the first time he'd ever seen Dirk move around on the basketball court, and this is what he had to say regarding that practice. Quote, and I'm watching Dirk move, and I'm like, shit, we don't have a chance. Come to find out, Chandler was genuinely concerned about Dirk's well-being after that practice. He'd gone over to the Mavericks trainer at the time, Casey Smith, and asked him what the heck was wrong with Nowitzki. According to Chandler, he asked Smith if Dirk had an injury or if his knee was seriously bothering him, and Smith gave him a pretty simple answer by saying, no, that's just what he looks like. Dirk's outlandish type of playstyle is probably what made him so unique and talented. Amari Stoudemire said that it was incredibly difficult to anticipate any of his shots because of how awkward he moved around the floor. It seems like everybody had a weird feeling about Dirk when he first made it into the league, but I think it's safe to say he put those concerns to rest for good now. Dirk Nowitzki shared a story about his confidence as a team leader to Sports Illustrated recently, and it's pretty inspiring to say the least. Dirk said that he's far from the most confident person in the world, and that his inability to speak English fluently really concerned him. He said that he was shy as well, which made stepping up and becoming a leader that much more difficult. Although, Dirk has definitely changed throughout the years and has become a far better leader than people give him credit for. Back at the end of his playing days, you could see him messing around with the younger guys and teaching them how everything works. He was also yelling and screaming on the sidelines for his team during practices and games to help everybody out. It may have taken a while for Dirk to really break out of his shell and become the leader that he is today, but I think it was well worth the wait. Even their general manager Don Nelson said that there are very few world-class competitors who truly appreciate the ride. Nowitzki actually learned his signature fadeaway move from his mentor, and it wasn't something he just came up with instantly. He used to learn a lot under Holger Geschwinder, the person who was his long-term mentor. Geschwinder was the official captain of the West German national team in 1972 and was also a physicist. He was able to combine his basketball knowledge with his other career path and determined that 60 degrees was the perfect angle to release a basketball shot. Once he was able to figure this out, he did everything he could to instill that knowledge onto Dirk when he was still very young. Dirk then got used to shooting at that specific angle and the fadeaway came along with it. And I would say that the rest is now history. When Davitsky was 27 years old, he was prepared to make a full diet commitment, and it ended up being a huge success. Around that time, Dirk was incredibly concerned about keeping his body happy and healthy, so much so that he opted to stop eating anything sugar-related to keep himself feeling fresh and quick. He did reveal that he cheated when Thanksgiving came around that year, but he said that the next practice he had with the team was one of his toughest yet, that his ankles were killing him throughout the day and it's helped motivate him to continue forward with his diet. If not for this life-changing decision, maybe we wouldn't have been able to watch Dirk play basketball well into his mid-30s. If it weren't for a random, uplifting statement, we may have not seen Dirk and the Mavericks win a championship. Dirk Nowitzki was seriously struggling during Game 6 of the 2011 NBA Finals. He made just one of his first 12 shot attempts from the floor. Now, the entire locker room was a little bit worried, and it seemed like Dirk simply lost his confidence heading into that second half. However, a man named Brian Cardinal ran into the room and shouted, Yeah, you've got them right where you want them. You're getting all your misses out of the way. 
Not only did the surprising excitement give Dirk a little wake-up call, but it was also enough to get him to laugh a little bit and help him relax. And after that, he started to settle into the flow of the game and started to once again believe in himself. He believed so much that he dropped 18 second-half points and led the team to a massive upset championship win over LeBron James and the Miami Heat. It was one of the most surprising and impressive championship runs of all time. Hey, and before we get to the next story, a quick reminder to make sure you stick around until the end of the video to find out who Dirk thought was the toughest player he's ever guarded. Our next story talks about how Dirk could have been a very talented musician if not for an incident with another player. In addition to basketball, Dirk was also taught by his mentor Geschwinder to play an instrument or two to keep himself balanced. So as he grew up, he learned to be a great guitarist and pianist. But Dirk wanted to just keep going and learn more, so he picked up the saxophone one day. He started to get pretty good at it until he got into a small scuffle with former San Antonio Spur Terry Porter, which resulted in Dirk getting one of his front teeth knocked out. To make matters worse, this happened right in the middle of an intense playoff game between the two teams, and ever since then, it became incredibly difficult to get back to the saxophone, and while he still plays it from time to time, he doesn't play it as often as he could have had he not lost a tooth at one point. I guess we'll truly never know how good Nowitzki could have been at the sax if he just kept to it. Maybe we could have seen a concert someday with him and Kenny G. Dirk Nowitzki is probably one of the most committed players that you will ever see touch an NBA court. You can talk to any Mavericks fan out there and they would all tell you the same exact story, that he's always putting a ton of work in behind the scenes to better himself at the sport he loves. Don Nelson said that another former first-round pick saw what Dirk was doing to better himself and declared that he would follow him around and copy his workout routine to get better on his own. So he started to work out every time that Dirk did and stayed as long after practice as he did too. However, after just a week of doing that, he ended up stopping because of the physical and mental toll it was taking on him. It was way harder than he'd anticipated, and it really put in perspective just how much work and dedication Dirk puts into his game. He's the perfect example of the fact that you can be the best at your craft, but you have to put in the work to make it happen. Dirk ended up taking a massive pay cut in the middle of his career after a pitch from Mark Cuban. You see, Dirk's contract expired back in 2010, and Cuban invited him over to his house to try and get the new contract sorted out. Neither of them really knew what to expect heading into that meeting, but it was clear they both wanted to get a deal done and fast. Cuban actually became emotional when giving his pitch to Dirk, saying that the team needs him and that both of them were in this thing together. Cuban followed that up by saying he and Dirk built the franchise up from the ground together and that he couldn't do it without him. Apparently, that was all Dirk needed to hear as he gave Cuban and the Mavericks a huge pay cut in order to make the rest of the team better. It was approximately a $16 million pay cut, something you'd probably never see another NBA star do nowadays unless they're maybe chasing a ring on a better team. That commitment and loyalty to the Mavericks ended up being rewarded the very next year as we all know the Mavericks won the championship in 2011. Dirk gave the craziest advice ever to Jason Kidd when it came to his shooting form. Kidd chose to return to the team that originally drafted him back in 2008, a team that now had a franchise-caliber player in Dirk Nowitzki. He knew without a doubt that Dirk had full control of the team and was their new leader, so he asked Nowitzki for some shooting advice to try and improve his shooting from beyond the arc that year. Here's what Dirk said to Jason while they were shooting around. Spacing your fingers just like this, tuck your arm, spread your feet like this, release the ball like this. The key to shooting is, you have to breathe. No, through your eyes. Breathe through your eyes. Jason said that he didn't even know what to say back to Dirk after receiving such crazy advice from one of the league's most talented shooters. Kid said that he continued to shoot the ball in light of this new knowledge and that Dirk was just standing there shaking his head the entire time. Although, crazy enough, Kid's three-point shooting actually did improve throughout that year. And as wild as you think that advice sounds, apparently it might actually have worked. Dirk believes that Kobe Bryant was by far the hardest player he ever had to go up against. 
Dirk appeared on Shot Science Basketball and was asked about his toughest matchup, and he responded with, Kobe, we tried everything. He was just, you couldn't stop him, unguardable. Dirk then detailed a story about how they had boxed Kobe into the corner of the court with the shot clock winding down and had taken his dominant hand away. Yet somehow he was able to spin, shoot it with his left hand and still knock it home all within that winding shot clock. Dirk said that there wasn't a single shot Kobe couldn't hit throughout his career and that his work ethic was truly inspiring. Of course, it's sad that Kobe had to leave this world so soon, and it's also unfortunate that we never got to see these two friends team up on the basketball court. Kobe was almost traded to the Mavericks a long time ago, but the offer fell through, and then the Lakers tried swiping Dirk away from Dallas, but given his loyalty, that didn't happen either. Still, coming from one all-time great about another, I can definitely see why Dirk thought Kobe was such a hard matchup. Hey, if you enjoyed this video guys, please make sure to keep watching by clicking the video 5 Best Hakeem Olajuwon Fights. And did we mention that there's an elbow, a slap, and a punch in there?